Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1810. The topic is training and the title is Specialty Bars for Squats, Safety Squat Bar and Camber Bar. If you're not familiar with the safety squat bar or the camber bar, I would highly suggest you pause the podcast <laughs> and maybe do a quick little YouTube search. Uh, safety squat bar squats, camber bar squats, so that way you have a, at least a visual idea of what's going on along with the uh, verbal presentation in today's podcast. But these are two specialty bars that can offer benefits for people other than or different than what you would find with a straight barbell. So I want to tell you about one of my clients that we're using these two bars with and then the reason why we're using the two bars. My hope is then that you would consider maybe using them for yourself and or better understand how to actually use them for yourselves if you have access to them. So I have a client uh, who right now in our training we're actually using both the camera bar and the squat bar in their squatting workouts. We're wanting to work on specific weaknesses, and I'll explain more how those bars help for that, as well as to learn various stances, different pathways uh, in regards to like bar path, to identify which stance, which pathway is going to feel the strongest for her. So she has a CrossFit background. Her previous squat was high bar, narrow stance, Olympic lifting shoes. Her strength had gone up to the high 200s. I think her best max is uh, 280. And it just stuck there. It, it blew up there, she said, within the first like year and a half or so of training. And then it was just stuck for a couple years. Uh, so thankfully, we're now working together to get that thing moving. Um, but she would get to the bottom, and when she would go to drive up out of the bottom, her torso would angle forward very aggressively. So like her chest would drop towards the floor and she would come up halfway and then just stall out and fall back down or her upper body would just kind of like fold. Her upper back would round over and then the bar would run kind of like roll into her neck and it just looked like, you know, death. <laughs> so, um, and that would just happen no matter what she did, uh, no matter how much she trained, how little she trained, no matter what she did with like different rep and set protocols. The, the big issue was is it was just the wrong position for her. If her goal and what her goal is, is strength. She wants to get a, a bigger squat. Uh, she wants that for various reasons, but she also just literally wants us to see how much she can squat. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we've changed her positioning to a low bar position. Not that everybody needs to do that, but it helped her uh, immensely. And then we took her feet wider and put them just on the outside edge of her shoulders rather than having them very narrow. She has very narrow hips. So she previously was standing with her feet maybe like two inches apart. It was a ridiculously narrow stance. So we now have her feet wider at just a kind of the outside edge of her shoulders. She automatically said it felt way more comfortable and she was able to kind of move normal weight loads in the low 200s more efficiently. She said it didn't feel as straining on her lower back. Uh, she didn't have as much like knee soreness. It was a really good change for us. Um, but what we noticed was she would still come down in the squat in too upright of a position. So on the descent, she would come down with her chest kind of pointing up. Uh, kind of like if you were standing talking to somebody, your chest would be pointing straight forward. She had too much of an uprighted chest forward position on the way down. So when she would hit the bottom of the squat and start to transition to pushing back up, her chest would all of a sudden angle downward very aggressively. So even though we made those changes and they helped that transition a, a lot, there is still some of that happening. And what that indicates is that we're not hinging properly enough in our hips. We're not getting enough like hip back and knee forward kind of balance on the descent, we ideally would like to match the angle of her torso, so the way in which the chest points to the ground. Uh, we would want, when she's driving up out of the bottom at maximal weight loads, that, that represents kind of the strongest balance between 
her posterior chain, backside muscles, and front muscles, like quadriceps. So we want to mimic that same angle on the way down, so we're just already in that position. And also, if we mimic that same angle on the way down, we're going to get eccentric loading into those tissues at that exact uh, positioning, which gets the exact type of uh, exact area of the tissue fibers, that it'll eventually make that even stronger and stronger on the way back up. If we mimic the same muscle balance on the eccentric loading, which is when we get most of our uh, muscle tissue damage in training, we're going to get the greatest strength response. So not only is it the stronger position right now, it's going to be the stronger position in the long run because it allows us to build our strong position over time. So that's our main focus is trying to get her descent torso angle to match the ascent torso angle that her body naturally defaults to. Now over time, if we continue to work on balancing certain muscles, we might be able to change that default ascent torso position. But as of right now, it's a pretty good position actually. She just has to learn to identify what she has to do in order to get into that position. And that's what the benefit of using the camber bar and the safety squat bar are going to allow us to do. So the camber bar, the benefit of the camber bar is it has a lower center of gravity due to the fact that the weights kind of sit out more at your hip height rather than up at your upper back. And the bar actually swings if your bar path isn't straight. Now those two benefits have been immense for her. The lower center of gravity, it reduces thoracic spine uh, stress, like upper back stress, and also lower back involvement in the, in the squat. So the ability for the low back to manage the position of the bar relative to the hips is reduced. This means that the hips and the legs have to do more of that balancing work. So she has to find a better balance between her hinging musculature, posterior chain, and the knee forward musculature, the quadriceps. So she has to find a better balance between hinging and knee forward on the descent because the bar doesn't allow the lower back to help out. And then also due to the lower center of gravity, due to the reduction of upper and lower back kind of positional uh, control, more of the workload overall goes into the legs. So it's gonna get us better leg growth, better hip musculature growth, and better overall isolative from the lower back, leg growth and leg strength. So that concept of the lower center of gravity is extremely helpful. So simply due to the construction of the camber bar, you're going to get a lot of benefits that are leg focused that reduce the upper and lower back involvement. The other benefit that we're getting from the camber bar is the bar's tendency to swing. Since the bar sits on our upper back, but the weights are down by our hips, it has uh, basically like a, a hinge point to where if you move forward or backward, the weights would start to swing in a lagging effect from where the touch point is on your upper back. So if you move forward, you would move the point on your back forward, and then there's a delay of the weights coming forward, but then they swing past where your upper back would stop. So it's almost like, uh, think of like a swing on a swing set, is it's gonna swing way forward, way back, way forward, way back. But by doing that, it's going to throw your body uh, center, center of gravity off, and it's going to give you a very good feedback to any horizontal movement in the squat. So if a person is coming down too upright in their descent in the squat, in that transition at the bottom where they go from descending to ascending, their shoulders are going to kick forward horizontally. And now it could be an inch, could be a couple inches, depending on how bad the person's position is. But by the shoulders kicking forward horizontally in that transition of going down versus when you start to push back up, the torso angle will angle greater towards the floor. So your chest is going to, like, your shoulders are going to go forward a couple inches, an inch or two or three, and then your chest is going to angle sharply towards the floor. That causes a delayed effect in the bar, the swing of the bar. So that movement mechanics, if you go down too upright in the ascent, you hit the bottom and you go to transition and driving up, but your shoulders kick forward and your torso angles down, that's a fault in your mechanics. That's something we want to fix. Uh, to raise awareness, the camera bar is great for that. 
because as the shoulders move horizontally, as the chest angles towards the floor, the bar would actually swing. It will swing forward and you will feel that. So the lifter gets physical feedback from the bar to feel that that oh, fault, that movement fault is occurring. And then what's nice about that is it happens at lighter weight loads than what you would typically be able to feel with a barbell. So they can do it at lighter weight loads, which helps it be safer. And it increases our overall volume of which we can practice with at a lighter weight load. So if I can get the sense of that, that pattern being off at 70% versus having to get to 85% before I feel that pattern being off, at 70% I could do way more training volume than I could at 85%. So I'm gonna get way more practice. So the camera bar being able to give you that feedback of that swing, which gives you the feedback of the default, the kind of negative faulty position, that's gonna happen at a lighter weight load, which keeps you safer, and it allows you for more volume practice. So those are the main benefits that we're getting for that client out of the camber bar is a lower center of gravity forcing more hinge uh, kind of interaction with the hips to better understand the correct torso angle on the way down and that swing effect. Now, after she does camber bar squats, we actually move on to safety squat bar. Now this is kind of fun because the safety squat bar has very different mechanics than the camber bar, but it offers uh, both similar and different benefits. The safety squat bar mimics a high bar placement, and that forces more of an upright torso, uh, which you would say, why in the world are we doing that? Uh, but we're forcing a more upright torso position because it places greater emphasis on the quads but due to that high bar position, it also gives us feedback on that forward tilt fault. So the high bar placement, even though we're wanting to correct the upright torso positioning in our squat, excuse me, even though we're wanting to correct the upright torso position in our squat, we also want to work on strengthening her quads and external rotational uh, muscle strength in her hips. So the wider position, uh, the wider stance position that we're using, the bar allows us to do um, even more uh, work after her hinging muscles have fatigued. So right now, the hindrance to how much she can squat is how much her glutes can manage in terms of volume. Once we maximize the glutes with the camber bar, if we switch to the safety squat bar, she can actually continue to squat practice because this is more quad dominant. So we pull away from the glutes a little bit, which actually gives us more ability to squat. So we get more time to practice the external rotational components in the hips. So that way she gets more ability to understand how to balance that. To Now that she's at a wider position, we don't want her knees to cave in. So this gives her a chance to practice on rotation, rotating the knees out to keep them out. So instead of doing camber bar and then moving into an accessory like leg press or lunges, we still want a squatting mechanic to our uh, accessory to include that external rotational practice. Now we could use front squats or zombie squats or something like that, but using the safety squat bar allows for a heavier weight load compared to front squats or zombie squats, or even if you wanted to do zercher squats, this allows for a heavier weight load, and it still has enough of that hinging mechanics that she still has to work on that positional awareness and control of her torso angle. So this is gonna give us a heavier weight load, uh, which just gives us more muscle, uh, muscle damage, which gives us greater growth response. And a heavier weight load gives her better feedback into how to brace uh, her hip rotation for heavier barbell squats. So the overall positional benefit of the high bar position allows us to continue to work on hip external rotation now even though her glutes are fatigued from the camper bar. Then also the forward tilt kind of fault. As I mentioned before, the safety squat bar still gives you physical feedback on the forward tilt fault. So she's gonna still be able to practice that to a lesser degree, but still get some degree of practice out of that compared to like a leg press, which would have no component of that whatsoever. 
So we want to keep the accessory still highlighting as many of the weak points that we want to work on as possible. Now the challenge is sometimes coming out of these variations. When you go back to a barbell squat, it can take four to eight weeks, which I write programs for my clients every four weeks on, on average. Uh, so that's going to be one to two programs. Um, so four to eight weeks to redefine kind of body positioning and proper mechanics for a barbell. Coming out of camber bar squats, you have to kind of relearn proper upper back tightness and upper back cues, and then also how to push back into the bar coming out of the bottom. Uh, those are going to be things you don't really get to feel on a camber bar. You have to relearn how to feel on the barbell. Coming out of the safety squat bar, uh, you're going to have to relearn the proper hinge effort to make sure you're not too upright on the descent of a regular uh, when you're lifting with a regular barbell. So. If you have access to specialty bars, they are a lot of fun to mix into regular training as they each have unique benefits that when used properly in training can help progress someone faster than just a straight bar alone. Because each bar can highlight movement faults and positional faults at lighter weight loads, which allows you for more volume practice at correcting that fault. So this allows a person to make corrections faster and safer due to the later, later weight loads. So it's really awesome when you have access to specialty bars is you can highlight faults at lighter weights which is safer and then it gives you more volume uh, possibility to practice correcting that fault. Awesome stuff. So if you have access to a safety squat bar or a camera bar, I hope you use them. There's a ton of benefit to them. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, just shoot me an email. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast, uh, which you can do on our website. The donations help going towards um, not only hosting costs, but also try to share and promote the podcast so we can help more people. So if you are wanting to help people, a donation towards the podcast will do that because then we can start to advertise the podcast on more platforms, have more people be aware of the podcast so that way more people can get help from the podcast. If you don't want to do a donation, uh, just then please share the podcast. You know, if you have any kind of social media outlet whatsoever, mention the podcast, see if you can get people to be aware of it so that way they can come and listen and hopefully it'll help their life. So I appreciate donations. I appreciate people sharing the podcast and hopefully whoever else then learns about the podcast appreciates your efforts as well. Then if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Jam. As always, I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.